So for my book talk, I'm going to be talking about The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. It is a murder mystery novel written in 1978. It follows 16 characters who are invited by a mysterious wealthy man named Sam Westing, who was murdered by one of these 16 people, to play a game called The Westing Game. The Westing Game basically is the 16 people trying to figure out who murdered Sam Westing. The winner gets all of his fortune. So there's a lot at stake right there. This book I would recommend for around fifth or sixth grade. There's a lot of vocabulary words that are really unfamiliar to a fourth or third grader, even for a fifth and sixth grader unfamiliar. But at that point, they're able to use context clues to define these um, unfamiliar words. And an example of this, I'll read from page 77. Can you stand on your legs? Sadal Pulaski asked. Can you walk at all? People never asked Chris those questions. They whispered them to his parents behind his back. N no, why? What better disguise for a thief or a murderer than a wheelchair? The perfect alibi. Chris enjoyed being taken for the criminal type. Now they were really friends. When you read me notes, what? Oh, read you my notes soon, very soon. Sidel daintily touched the corners of her mouth with the napkin, pushed back her chair, and grabbed her polka dot crutch. That was a superb meal. I must give my compliments to the chef. She rose, knocking the chair to the floor, and clumped towards the kitchen. Where is she going? Angela started up to help her partner and was distracted by a shouting in the corridor. Hello in there. Anybody home? Through the restaurant door came a bundled and booted figure. He danced an elephantine jig, stomping snow on the carpet, flung a long woolen scarf from his neck, and yelled, Otis Amber is here. The roads are clear. That's when the bomb went off. So right there you have at least three vocabulary words that might be unfamiliar for a student. First one being alibi. Second one being superb. And the third one obviously being elephantine. So starting off, um, I'm going to go over superb and elephantine. Those are two of the easiest ones um, in this scenario to figure out using context clues. Superb, in the line it says, that was a superb meal, I must give my compliments to the chef. The student can use those context clues to decide that superb means excellent, really good, because this character wants to go give their compliments to the chef. Second one I'll go over is elephantine. So this one's a little bit more tricky. Um, it says, he danced an elephantine jig stomping snow on the carpet and flung a long woolen scarf from his neck. So right there, that can be, if you visualize um, an elephant's behavior, stomping around, flinging their trunk back and forth. If you really imagine that the student should be able to use those context clues to decide that um, elephantine without realizing right away that elephant is in the name that is describing an elephant's behavior. So that's just an example of one reason why the uh, this book might be best suited for someone or for a student in fifth or sixth grade. Another reason why is because this is a murder mystery. You learn clues as you go. So you're not upfront knowing anything that the other characters don't know. That being said, you have to have a lot of patience. You have to really pay attention to the characters, the plot, and a student in maybe the third or fourth grade might not have the attention span or the patience for this book as they might just want to flip all the way to the ending and read it. Even so, this book, you can't skip around. Ellen Raskin perfectly designed this book to where you have to read the chapters, pay attention, and really think to yourself and guess what could happen next, which is exactly why this is a quick read. Once you pick it up, you don't want to stop. The 
character dialogue is so intriguing. There's always something funny and witty about their dialogue. The characters are super kooky, crazy, um, really interesting to read about. And then, uh, for instance, a bomb went off in this last snippet that I read. So the student would most likely want to read on um, to find out what happened, if the characters are okay, everything like that. An activity that I would probably do with my students um, is a character analysis, small group character analysis. I would assign one character um, per small group have them anal uh, analyze, excuse me, the character from the beginning of the story all the way until where we are now, and then share it with the class so everyone's on the same page. It's a really good way to get the students involved in the story. Ellen Raskin involve, wants the, the reader to be involved in the book as much as possible. You learn the clues as the characters do. You yourself, the reader, are like left guessing what's happening next. Who, you know, who could have murdered this man? Um, another thing that the reader is going to be thinking about throughout the book is this part in chapter one. Who were these people, these specifically selected tenants? They were mothers and fathers and children, a dressmaker, a secretary, an inventor, a doctor, a judge, and oh yes, one was a bookie, one was a burglar, one was a bomber, and one was a mistake. This is just in chapter one. So throughout the whole book, the student or the reader, I should say, is going to be thinking about this in the back of their head. Could this be the bomber? Could this be the... Um, burglar could this be the bookie you really don't know even all the way up to the end you're left guessing and the ending is so shocking i read this when i was in fifth grade and i still didn't remember everything when i was uh, approaching the ending of this book i completely forgot everything that happened uh whenever i previously read it so the ending was such a surprise for me as well which is something that I really like about this book. It's kind of like Clue, but in a book form, a little murder mystery. So I hope that this book talk really got you interested in the book. And if you do decide to sit down and read The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin, I hope that you enjoy it as much as I did and have as much fun with it as I did as well.